what is going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Tom Vecchio of FanDuel, who's here to tell us some late-round players that we should be targeting in our fantasy football draft. What's going on, Tom? I'm doing good. You know, we have all the top, you know, top tier studs everyone's looking for. When you need to fill out the rest of your roster, we got a couple of players we want to target. Absolutely. I'm a late round quarterback guy myself. And one of the quarterbacks that I've been all over actually during draft season is Baker Mayfield. His ADP right now is around 140. And I know people are pretty on both sides of Baker Mayfield. One, they think, hey, last year was not a fluke. This is the guy that you're going to draft again. With Kevin Stefanski running the show, it's a running football team. They're not going to pass it enough for Mayfield to be uh, successful. And then there's the other side of people where, remember his rookie year, remember his senior year, and remember the weapons that he has. Baker Mayfield, to pick 140, seems pretty damn good to me. On top of being 140, he's QB 14 coming off the board right now. So, you know, in theory, he wouldn't be the first quarterback you're drafting. And, you know, looking back at last year, it was a tough year for him. He took 40 sacks, which was the seventh most in the league. And just looking at those plays, that's just, you know, destroying his fantasy production, just dead plays, just leaving points out on the field. But we know that the Browns improved their offensive line in the offseason. They signed Jack Conklin. They drafted Jedrick Wills from Alabama. And really, hopefully, a step forward for the entire offense overall, running and passing. If we look at their overall season coming up, we have we see that they have the third easiest strength of schedule according to sharp football stats. They get to play the Bengals twice a year, really putting them in, in some good spots. So I like going back to Baker this year, specifically because he's the fact he's the second quarterback on your roster. You can choose to play him in the spots where they're going to be in the favorable matchups. You don't have to rely on him on a week-to-week -week basis. So I'm looking back to Baker, improved offensive line, new coach, everything kind of going in his favor this year. Mayfield doesn't have to deal with Freddie Kitchens anymore, as Giants fans do. And he's in a position to bounce back a little bit, utilize those weapons more, and take a place in your starting lineups on your fantasy football rosters. A little bit later on, about 12 picks, so another round, you could get Sammy Watkins, the second wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs, already battling an injury, which he's had, which he's had many, many years of his career. But Sammy Watkins is kind of unheralded. But, as Jim Thomas was telling us yesterday, you want pieces that are cheap of high-powered offenses. And while you're going to have to play a first-round pick for Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, you're going to have to pay a second-round pick for Tyreek Hill, you're going to have to pay a very early-round pick for Patrick Mahomes, Sammy Watkins doesn't cost too much, and the exposure is there. Absolutely. I'm fully on board that theory, getting exposure to really strong offenses, and he's really not coming at a high cost. Uh, wide receiver 53 off the board right now. This would be another depth piece you're adding, right? You have you know some top-tier running backs. You have some receivers. Now you're looking to add some depth to round out your roster, and you know he's the number two wide receiver on the Chiefs. You know Being tied to Patrick Mahomes, who you know, is, is a pretty good quarterback, I guess you could say, is always a good thing. And you know last year, he actually finished second on the team in, recept uh, in targets with nine. 90. And we did see Tyreek Hill miss a few games, but we know that Mahomes is willing to go to Sammy Watkins. And we have to deal with the injury history, but we're not taking too much of a risk for him when he's this far down in drafts. So I'm looking to go back to Sammy Watkins. And again, one of your receivers is on a bye. You can slot him in there knowing that the Chiefs are going to be throwing the ball. So I'm on board with him as a deep wide receiver target this year. We named Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. We named Tyreek Hill. Patrick Mahomes. Let's not forget about Travis Kelsey, another top two-round pick for the Chiefs. You can just wait 100 picks or so, even more. Go out and get Stanley Watkins. He won't cost you much. And, hey, he's a perfect guy to fill in uh, during a bye week. Put in your flex spot. He's not a guy that you have to start every week, and the cost isn't there. It's cheap exposure to one of the best offenses in the NFL. Sammy Watkins. Draft him and feel comfortable doing so. Final here, we wanted to give you one tight end that's worth drafting, and that's Chris Herndon. ADP at 167. Chris Herndon was a popular breakout target last year, and injuries riddled him throughout the season. Now, same offense, same quarterback, and he seems healthy. He cost you nothing, and very easily, I feel like, he finishes a top 12 tight end. On top of the injury from last year, he was also suspended for the first four games. So we're really not getting anything we can look at from last year. If we go back to 2018, when he played a full season, he was top 10 in yards per reception, yards per target, and red zone targets among tight ends, which is really, really strong. And then if we look back to actually last season when he didn't play, we saw Jets tight end Ryan Griffin finish with six red zone touchdowns which is awesome, knowing that you know Sam Darnold likes to target tight ends when they get to the red zone. We also know the Jets 
don't have a good defense, which means that they're going to be playing with a positive game script. And on top of Chris Herndon being free, we have all of these factors in play, positive game script. He's a legitimate strong tight end. And we know that Darnold likes to target tight ends when they get to the scoring opportunities. So, you know, if you don't get Kelsey, you don't get Kittle, Ertz, uh, Darren Waller, Mark Andrews, whoever it may be, wait until you can have some depth in your roster and then look to grab Chris Herndon. After seeing what Ryan Griffin did in the red zone last year and knowing what Chris Herndon did the year before, there's so much talent around that tight end position for the Jets. And Chris Herndon's the guy you want to draft. He costs you nothing. You fill out your roster, as Tom said, and you get a bargain in Chris Herndon very late in drafts. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Tom, good luck in your drafts, my friend. Same to you. Talk to you soon. Absolutely. Tomorrow, Megan Nunez will join us as we take a look at some bets she's making before football season begins over at the FanDuel Sportsbook. For Tom Vecchio, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Good luck in your drafts. And I'll see you tomorrow right here on the FanDuel Hurry Up.